Good afternoon, Evan. How are you oh, today, Gil? Oh, how are you? I'm good. I've got my Thanksgiving goggles here ready to go. Just in case at any point today, any stuffing or <laughs> turkey gets thrown in my direction, I am protected against all flying objects, much like the pilgrims of a couple hundred really? years the ago. The pilgrims are wearing the eyewear oh, yeah. as well? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the Polaroids. I missed that in my elementary school class. Yeah, when I see, learned what about happened it. was uh, Native Americans were throwing turkeys at pilgrims, <laughs> and uh, a couple of them fell into a fire. They tasted good. They ate them. I want you to do the entire yeah. show with the goggles on. I have on. no problem. I got my turkey <laughs> goggles on. You never know what stuff is going to fly in my direction at my house. So I wear these as protective eye coverings for Thanksgiving. Plus... There's a lot of stuff going to be thrown around this studio today. So let me give you a little thing, uh, two things out of the gate. All right, number one, whether you like it or not as Giant fans, something became clear today. Joe Judge has job security. Joe Judge is not being fired no matter what. How do I know that? How do you know that, Craig? I know it because he tried to tell a joke today at his press conference with the media, meaning He's comfortable. And if he thought for a minute that his job was on the line, he wouldn't be making jokes today about who his offensive uh, coordinator is going to be, not just for this Sunday, but for the rest of the year. We're going to play it for you coming up. And then the sheep media that cover <laughs> the New York Giants, how they reacted to it, further proves that John Mara has told Joe Judge, you're good, we're going to give you another year. That's just the reality of it, because if you felt like your job security was on the line, you'd be all business. You'd be trying to reassure your bosses and the fan base that you take this seriously, that you recognize you may not be back next year. Joe Judge was telling jokes so today. Then why did he fire Jason Garrett? Be he fired Jason Garrett because he had to go to management and say, I figured out what the problem is. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me, of course. <laughs> right. It was him. That's what happened yesterday. Today, it's about job security, which clearly he has. That's one. Number two, uh, this one's going to bother you more than the first one, Evan. It played itself out publicly. Is it hard to look at Mary with these goggles on? I can't take it seriously. <laughs> Not right. that I ever do. Right. But well, listen. Sure. It played itself out publicly today, and it's another example of... Even when they try not to be the New York Mets, they're still the New York Mets. Steve Cohen put out a tweet today. Wah! An agent lied to me. Wah! What happened to a man giving me their word and standing by it? Wah! And Steven Matz goes to St. Louis, four years, 44 million bucks. They thought they had a deal done. And yet again... A player and his agent turned their backs on the Mets and went elsewhere. Now we have to start figuring out why. Are we supposed to cry about this, though? Wah. The owner cries. I mean, look, look, I, I actually wanted Steven Matz back on the yeah, right deal. Did. I you was said one it of those. I, I was, and I was one of the few Mets fans that did. But four years, $44 million, fine, go ahead. Wah. Here's the bottom line for Steve Cohen I don't mind him tweeting. And ripping agents. I don't. You may be offended by it. Others I'm not may offended be offended by, by it. I think it's beneath him. Beneath him. It doesn't matter. Look, Steve Cohen's a different kind of owner. He's going to be on social media. It is what it is. He's going to bitch when he doesn't like what an agent did. It is what it is. It doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that on November 24th, with a lockout looming, the Mets haven't really done anything. Well, that's correct. what bothers me. They've lost, even worse than that, though, Evan, they've lost guys Fair. they thought yeah. they had. No, no doubt about and we, it. By the way, we could argue day and night, all right, so what, Syndergaard went elsewhere? Hey, so what? We didn't want to give $44 million bucks to Mets. Right. We could make those arguments, and those are well-placed. I'm not suggesting for a minute that, oh, the Mets are going to suck because they didn't get these deals done. It's the image again that two players now, it's not, a former Met and a but, current but Met, Craig, it's not the both image said, of I want to come back and then left. Well, no, that's BS, though. That's, that's BS. Stephen Matz According didn't want to come Steve back. Cohen. Stephen Matz didn't want to come back. Steve Cohen thought he did. Okay, he thought that, and maybe his agent lied to him, and maybe his agent. Well, clearly used he new, did. Okay, that. That wouldn't be the first time a player and an agent used New York, True. used the Yankees, or used the Mets. Yeah. The difference is Steve Cohen's attacking it publicly. Correct. Like, the difference is 
George Steinbrenner wasn't on Twitter to attack Greg Maddox and say, that son of a B. Sure. He used us for a free Broadway show and dinner in New York City, and then he went to the Braves. Right? Yep. Steve Cohen is publicly saying, hey, I got lied to. The truth is we want action. That's what we want as Mets yeah. fans. Now, we can differ about Steven Matz. It doesn't matter anymore. He's not here. He went to the Cardinals. Whatever. They need to add players. And here's the thing Steve Cohen better realize. He talked a big game at that press conference. We're going to spend money. Well, now you got to do it. And here's the other problem. There's going to be a lockout in a week. And that lockout, Craig, may last two months, three months, four months, one month. I don't know. Do you want Met fans during that lockout stewing over adding nobody? Now, I get it. That doesn't mean the offseason's over. But again, do you want Met fans? Do you want guys like me? Do you want Sal Licata? And do you want every Met fan listening right now to go into Thanksgiving, go into Christmas, go into New Year's, and God knows when the lockout's going to end with nothing? With no fix in the rotation, without adding Chris Bryant, without adding Starling Marte, that's bad PR. And that's the bad PR Steve should worry about, not a dopey tweet about Steven Matz, his agent. I guess words and promises don't matter. Now, I got to believe at some point in his life as an investment guru, he has said one thing and done the other. That I would agree I with, I would yes. think that. I'm not <laughs> suggesting that. I, I know for a fact I don't. But I got to think there have been times in his life as an investment banker guy where he probably looked you dead in the eye and said, all right, I'm going to buy that stock and turn around and did the other thing. Or this whole GameStop nonsense. Right. I don't know what his role in that was or wasn't. But when the owner comes out, wah, I guess words and promises don't matter. Wah. And then the agent for Steven Matz comes out and goes, uh, it's unfortunate that Mr. Cohen chose to take his frustrations to Twitter. I will not do the same. Instead, I'll take the high road, which is consistent with both my character no. and the character of our client, Steven Matz, who loves New York and contributes to first responders, blah, 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 blah. The New York Mets got played. And here's the thing you have to be afraid of moving forward. Everybody knows that Steve Cohen has more money than every other owner. That's a well-known fact. And now we've seen how agents are going to use that yep, fact. No doubt. That's true. And that yeah. is, we love you, New York. We can't wait to Trevor play for Trevor Bauer you. did it. And the Mets react to it. It's a knee-jerk reaction. Oh, you love us? We'll pay you to play for us. And they let the guy leave the room without signing the contract because they believe in the guy. They believe in the word of the agent. And three times now, for sure, Bauer going to L.A., Matt's going to St. Louis, and Syndergaard going to the Angels. They have been used because the Mets made an offer. That offer was higher than anything else out there. And then they shopped that offer. That is a very dangerous precedent to set. And one that puts the Mets in a very what do you unique mean a position. Dangerous president to send. It's been going yes. on for years. Well, not with the Mets, it hasn't. Well, because the this Mets didn't have money. For the because Mets. the Mets didn't have an owner that was willing to spend. But That's now why. they do, and it's being <laughs> right. used against well, yeah. them. And look, ask Brian Cashman over the years how many times a guy used the New York Yankees. I'm it sure happens. It does. But nobody's going to cry. Even though I happen to be one of the few guys that would have been okay with bringing Steven Matz in, not on four years, $44 million, by the way. Okay. I would have brought him in on a one-year deal. That's what I thought it would be, even a two-year deal. But nobody's crying over the fact that Steven Matz, other than Steve Cohen, used the Mets to get more money in years. I think the Mets are. Well, they the, owner came, the owner came out, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, Because boo he probably had a discussion with the agent and was lied to. You know, if the agent is telling him, look, Stephen Matz has, quote, unfinished business here, as Steve Cohen claims that was said to him via Joel Sherman, then he felt like this agent, who doesn't exactly represent a laundry list of great MLB players. He does not, no. That he did BS Steve Cohen, and he was pissed about it. Steve and you Cohen know what? got played. And, and but here's Craig, the thing. If Steve Cohen is the impetus for Bobby Axelrod mm -hmm. on the hit show Billions, and that's what everyone said, that ain't how he act, that guy operates. 
He never gets played in his real business. Yeah, but this is baseball. He got played three times this already. Is, but, but, well, okay, look at the three guys. Look at the three guys. Yeah, Bauer, rapist, allegedly. Uh-huh. Uh, Noah Syndergaard has him, uh, two innings in the last two years. Who okay. Cares? And Steven Matz. And Steven Matz, who, to be fair, had a good year for Toronto. Fine. He's and would have made this rotation better. He's a back-of-the-rotation guy. The reason I wanted Steven Matz was to fortify the back of the rotation. He's not a number two or a number three pitcher. So, so far... The three guys that use the Mets, no one's going to cry over. That no one is. But, it's but a, the it's bottom the line is, here's the principle. Go out and get good baseball players, Steve. Yeah, maybe they Look, can't. If you, of, well, where's the evidence of that so far well, this offseason? The three guys they wanted went elsewhere. Good baseball players, I just said. Well, listen, Trevor Bauer is off the field. Chris right? Bryant, Starling Marte. Yes. Those are the guys the Mets want to target. Bringing back Marcus Stroman, which is becoming a necessity. Gaussman. Kevin Gaussman, who's okay. Is it Gauss? That's the target. I, I mean, to Gaussman. cry about Steven Matz and Noah Syndergaard and last year with Trevor Bauer, whatever. Here's the thing you got to get used to, I got to get used to, everyone's got to get used to. Steve Cohen is very different than other owners. He's going to be vocal. He's got a little Steinbrenner in him. No, no he doesn't. I want to see. Hold on. I have, to, I have to stop you on that. What? Steinbrenner wouldn't have cried. Steinbrenner didn't have Twitter. Steinbrenner would not have cried. Steinbrenner would have come out aggressively. George Steinbrenner was outspoken on many issues during his he time as owner. He wouldn't have cried. He wouldn't have said, well, I'd be George Steinbrenner once complained about the DH in the American League after the brawl with Armando Benitez That's and Tino Martinez. not crying about an agent turning his back no, 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 on no, his no, word. Not, you're talking about a Steve specific Cohen thing. Is crying. Craig, you're talking about a specific wow. thing. I'm talking about other things that George was outspoken about and technically yes, cried about. I'm not saying there's a difference he between being ab- outspoken and, and complaining about a situation... Then crying about how a particular player turned his back. Well, that's on you. the way you're defining it, though. You're defining a cry and a complaint differently. I My am. point that's is, right? Yes. George Steinbrenner in the past, and look, Steve's got a long way to go to be George. He needs to win. He needs to get players. All that has to happen. I want to make that clear. But George was an outspoken guy. Yeah. Steve Cohen is showing us he's going to be outspoken. But the point is, wow. what Steve needs to do. Oh, wait a minute. Go they, get baseball players. We have uh, Steve Cohen on the line, they tell me. He's not afraid of Evan Roberts. Uh, Steve, your reaction, just uh, your go to a reaction, and we'll get into the specifics of what happened here in a moment. But Steve Cohen, owner of the Mets, your immediate go to a reaction to Steven Matz turning his back on whatever agreement you guys thought you had and going to St. Louis. No! <laughs> Upset about it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, we can move forward with that. Go get me players now. Yeah, you better like go get most somebody. Most Met fans, if you're reading the room, and I know you are, I'm not sure yeah. Steve is, most Met fans, present company not included, didn't want Steven Matz. Like most Met fans last night when that news I don't broke. Know about that. No, is that true? true? Yeah, yeah. I, I was, thought you guys wanted Matz, I Gaussman, no. and uh, Stro. No Stroman. one ever said that to you. No? No. You didn't have that conversation No, yesterday? I told you I was concerned about Kevin Gaussman. I wasn't sure exactly what no. he is. I said, I, I feel take like Matz. that conversation. And I'm telling you what I just said. You don't uh, listen a lot of times. Maybe that's what it was. And it's okay. Okay. Maybe. I know we had a conversation yes. about Gaussman, Stroman, yes. and Matz yesterday, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I told you I was in the minority as a Met fan wanting Matz back on a short term deal to fill out the back of the rotation. He didn't get a short-term deal. He got four years, $44 million, and most Met fans, I'm telling you, I saw it in Twitter last night, were like, yes, we didn't get him. So the Met fans aren't crying. But what the Met fan wants is they want action. There's a clock ticking right now, Craig, and it's going to tick midnight in about five days when there's a lockout. None of us as Met fans, and Yankee fans too, want to go into this roster freeze without a big move. Now, maybe it's Marcus Stroman, maybe it's Starling Marte, maybe it's bringing back Baez. I don't know who it is, but I'm telling you right now, the mood of the Met fan, if there's no significant, and I'm not including Nick Plummer, by the way, who's a nice little pickup. He's an outfielder. They yeah, just signed him. They just signed him. Really? Little outfielder. What team did he Nick Plummer. What organization yeah, was he in? No. Yeah. Early in his career, he played for the Brewers. <laughs> he, uh, they found him uh, down in Switzerland. <laughs> no, not they a well known player make, at the time, more of a skier. They need, you're funny. They need to make a significant move to calm our nerves going into the lockout. So, Steve, if you're listening, if you have anybody listening, enough talk, enough crying, I'll give you that, enough of it. 
Go get us a player. Well, we'll Thank you. In, we'll get into that. We'll let you hear the Joe Judge uh, comedy routine. We'll also start talking to people who I imagine are leaving their homes now to try to get to UBS uh, in time for tonight's uh, Ranger Islander game. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve traffic. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> anyway, that's coming up throughout the show today. Plus, we have our first ever edition of Sonny's Thanksgiving Delicacies. We'll explain what that is to you later on in the show as well. It should be a fun show. We had a charcuterie for lunch, and for some reason, next to the piece of prosciutto, there was a California roll. I don't know how that happened, but we'll investigate. It's all coming up right here on The Fan, Carton and Roberts, all the way to 630. 